Do you have a foul lean rich exchanger? Is there any hope? Stay watching because we are going to delve into this very troublesome topic. Welcome to the Experts Network. first episode of the experts network my name is ben spooner i am an engineer with aiming experts we are a division of sulfur experts and in this program we are going to tackle frequently asked questions industry news and maybe even a little bit of the his history of the aiming industry so our first question today comes to us from a very good client of ours uh, in the middle east thank you very much for writing in this client is operating an acid gas enrichment unit and they're having fouling of their lean rich exchanger so the question is dealing with fouled lean rich exchanger now first of all a lot of you watching probably don't operate acid gas enrichment units they're not that common around the world but really all, all you need to know about it is that they are a, a, a high co2 to low h2s ratio absorber where the idea is you try to slip the co2 through the absorber and pick up the h2s very similar in concept to a tail gas treatment absorber or even a lot of gas plant absorbers where we're trying to remove the h2s but reject the co2 okay so Fouling of a lean rich exchanger. Now, first of all, guys, this ex specific exchanger is a plate and frame. Okay, a lot of you watch are like probably nodding. Yep, plate and frame exchanger fouling. Very common. All right. Now, the plate and frame is on the lean side was nice shiny metal okay here it is it's fine no fouling there. The rich side, flip that same plate over, and here's what it looked like. Thick black sludge is what fouled it. Now in a high CO2, low H2S ratio situation, the fouling is likely a type of iron sulfide called McKenna White, generally mixed with anti-foam, possible amine degradation products, anything of high viscosity. So the question is, is there a solution to get rid of the fouling once it's in place? And unfortunately, you know, if you're talking about an online cleaning, some chemical you can just add to your amine to displace or dissolve the fouling, the answer is no, unfortunately, no. You need to have prevented the fouling from happening in the first place, but you cannot remove fouling once it's in place by adding anything to the amine. Especially if the fouling is this, what we call black shoe polish, this iron sulfide based material, you would have to add some kind of potassium permanganate or acid to your amine to try to dissolve the iron sulfide and what that would do is it would ruin your amine it would form heat stable salts or it would make the amine foam um, and furthermore even if it did work to displace the fouling all the fouling material would do is just go downstream and foul the next step in your process which is in this case would be your regenerator so we can't get rid of fouling once it's in place this is why a lot of plants who have plate and frame exchangers will have a second unit sitting there on standby or a, a spare unit not in service just waiting to be thrown in uh, when the existing one fouls now a couple of things we're seeing some trends in the industry to prevent fouling of the plate and frame exchanger a lot of plants are installing rich amine filters okay rich amine filtration right upstream of the exchanger that way the filter fouls instead of the exchanger when i was an operator way back this is 20 years ago now but we just used these bag filters nothing fancy nothing expensive and they worked fairly well for our purpose you can of course get way better filters than bags but another even cooler newer trend we're seeing is upstream of whatever your particle filter is we're putting uh we're seeing people install these magnetic filters and the magnetic Magnetic filters would work very well in these high CO2, low H2S ratio plants because uh, the magnetic filters remove anything with iron in it. So iron sulfides, anything that's uh, ferric, I guess they call it, or ferrous, sticks to the magnet. You still have your particle filter downstream to catch anything that gets through the magnet. 
but ultimately you wind up with a lot of protection of your lean rich exchanger that's about it with a felled exchanger you can't clean it online have a spare one that you put into service while you do take your existing one apart and clean it or send it to the manufacturer for cleaning have a filtrate filter upstream of your exchanger and possibly a magnetic filter upstream of your particle filter if you were to phone amy and experts though for this help what we would do is we would work on preventing these fouling particles from existing in the first place. So we have clean lean amine, clean rich amine. And that gets into a whole different topic with which if you're interested in, of course, please leave your comments in the section below here and we'll tackle it in a future episode of the Experts Network, but it involves optimizing your amine circulation rate and it's also maximizing the CO2 slip through the absorber. A lot of times it's the amine picking up that CO2 that you don't really want it to do in the first place, but if you do pick up the CO2, it leads to the, for leads to the formation of the fouling material. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, again, any future questions or comments, please leave in the section below. Also, if you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you'll see us every week. We're gonna try to do these things weekly. And uh, thanks very much for watching. That's it for now.